Welcome back, Kaiju Kitties. This is Aiden, and today we're doing sort of a follow-up to last week's episode about uh, War of the Gargantuas. In that video, I briefly mentioned the prequel film to that, which was Frankenstein Conquers the World. Now, even though War of the Gargantuas seems to get universal praise from hardcore kaiju fans and even kind of casual horror movie viewers, Frankenstein Conquers the World never really gets as much love, and that's kind of baffling to me. So today I want to pay a little respect to this movie because I think it's not only a ton of fun, but it's also very well made and pretty unique among the Toho films. Now the main thing I see in complaints about Frankenstein Conquers the World is that, oh the plot is too crazy and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well first of all, if you're watching kaiju films, you should be able to suspend your disbelief just a bit. And second, what about this plot doesn't make any sense? The heart of the Frankenstein monster is stolen by Nazis and smuggled to Japan just in time for the Hiroshima bombings of 1945, which causes the heart to be absorbed by radiation, and then a homeless child eats it and causes him to transform into a gigantic caveman who is blamed for the murders being caused by a burrowing dinosaur, and then the two fight it out until finally a giant octopus crawls out of the forest, grabs the caveman, and drowns him. Come on, that's, that's basic movie writing 101. Okay, aside from that, the movie is very well done, the miniatures are excellent, the monsters themselves are great, and the highlight monster of the film is, of course, Odako, the giant octopus who would later show up uh, to attack Gyra in the sequel. But aside from Odako, there's Baragon. And, oh, Baragon. The question I have to ask is, how did he get so popular? Not objecting to that at all. I love Baragon. Lots of people love Baragon. It's kind of strange, though, that he was so popular for such a long time just based on a couple of film appearances, that which was just Frankenstein Conquers the World and a very, very quick appearance in Destroy All Monsters. I know he showed up way, way later in uh, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, but before that, he was still super popular. I kind of have the suspicion that Baragon was always more popular due to the fact that he merchandised well rather than his movie appearances. Let's face it, it's a very fun design. I don't know what, is it because of the cute factor? Is it because of the big puppy eyes and the weird ears that a dinosaur probably shouldn't have? Well, I guess the answer to that is maybe it is the film appearances. When you go back and look at Frankenstein Conquers the World, Baragon actually isn't in it all that much, but when he does appear, yes, he completely steals the show. And the funny thing about it is, actually, yeah, funny is the operative word. Baragon is a funny monster. A lot of his antics are pretty clownish, you know, jumping at his opponent, landing on his head and falling off a cliff is pretty goddamn funny. Baragon's behavior is also funny, too, for anyone who's ever owned a dog. And I don't mean that just because Baragon kind of looks like a dog, but some of his rampages are surprisingly more like a dog getting into the garbage and tearing it apart than it is like Godzilla tearing apart Tokyo. In particular, Baragon's attack on the farm and gobbling up all the, the pigs and chickens and even the little toy horse, it's not really done so much for horror or, you know, intense excitement. It's just a silly scene. Intentionally silly, too. We all know the anecdote about Eiji Tsuburaya not wanting to intercut actual horse footage and just have a little toy horse getting eaten because it's funny! Maybe that's the reason just why Baragon is just so appealing. In the mid-1960s when Kaiju Ega was starting to become popular, it's around the time when the monsters themselves were starting to become anthropomorphized, and later on their behavior would get really, really silly in the 1970s. Baragon is sort of among the first of the kaiju to be intentionally goofy. I'm thinking maybe the humor sort of started with King Kong vs. Godzilla, but around 1965 is also the year when Godzilla was doing his goofy Shie dance on uh, Planet X, so it was just the right time for the monsters to start getting sillier. Maybe it was for the appeal of the children, maybe it's because Tsuburaya just wanted to inject more humor to amuse child audiences, or maybe that's just the way the audiences and culture at the time was going. Either way, Baragon is loads of fun. I mean, just look at him. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. No, you put down the horse. Put down the horse. No, drop it. Drop it. All right, guys. Glad you enjoyed, and tune in next time for more monster goodness. Bye-bye.